Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to another video talking about the newest AI tools for business. Today we're looking at Perplexity AI, which just came across my desk last night. So, what is Perplexity AI? Well, Perplexity is pretty much a competitor to ChatGPT's code interpreter. It seems like they are kind of taking advantage of the fact that ChatGPT does not have its browsing feature enabled right now due to some issues that OpenAI found with it. So Perplexity is trying to exploit that issue right now by combining their own code interpreter along with a browsing feature that allows Perplexity basically to search the internet and gather scholarly sources that will help you with your research process. So it's definitely a little bit more intense than Code Interpreter in terms of providing research information and actual citations, but it doesn't necessarily provide any greater value than that, especially not at a pro cost of $20 a month. And this is a concept that we'll talk about a little bit later in the video on why you should be weary of tools exactly like this, exactly like Perplexity. This is not to say that Perplexity doesn't have its own value, but is it um, worth the 20 extra dollars on top of what you're paying for ChatGPT for already? The only additional feature you get with Perplexity is the fact that it can search the internet. And that may not necessarily be that big of a requirement for you. That may be something you want to do yourself. I'm not sure if that's something you should be trusting the AI to do for you. But regardless, first we're going to look at some basic use cases, how perplexity works, uh, what other people have done, and then we'll go and compare it between ChatGPT code interpreter, see how that looks, and then we'll also try and do some more rigorous testing, like seeing if it can handle multiple files. Uh, I will not be paying for a pro version for this video because I do think it's pretty absurd for uh, w what perplexity offers i don't think it's worth twenty dollars a month so we'll try and do our best with the free credits that we have as you can see we have five copilot reloads and so what copilot means it's kind of like uh, Microsoft's Copilot that they were trying to introduce where you can have the AI basically be a helping hand for you. You give it a task and it can complete that task and do research for you. Except with perplexity, the main goal is for research. It's not meant to be, you know, working on your computer. It's not meant to handle your emails. It's specifically meant for research only, basically. All right, so taking a look at Perplexity's website, we're just going to go tab by tab here and explain everything. And so the first thing I wanted to look at is actually what we talked about in our last video, which is pretty cool. It's not something that ChatGPT doesn't have. It's actually something that they just introduced, uh, custom instructions. So essentially what you could do with custom instructions is provide information about your business that ChatGPT could then use as a base to work off of your information in the future. So if you provide it some general information about business, it's going to look at that information from the context of whatever info you gave it in the custom instructions. So this is kind of a similar situation here where we could provide a profile of our business, of ourselves, whatever we think the AI needs to know about us in order to act efficiently for our goal, we can put that here. Then we have our threads, which is kind of like ChatGPT, except a little bit more organized. You can search for them. Um, this implies to me that you can have basically an unlimited amount of threads, which is pretty interesting. Not sure how much that is valued to you guys, but still something that I wanted to make note of. Then we also have our discovery page, which is where we're going to be spending some time here. So to show an example of how perplexity works and what a typical thread looks like with perplexity, we're going to look at one of their sample prompts here. And so the sample prompt that they have is how does the human eye compare to a camera in terms of resolution? And what you can see here is that we have five different resources or six rather six different sources um, that it looked at in order to come up with its answer as well as chat GPT 4 and its inherent knowledge and so here's the thing that's really cool about this is that they have it really summarized nice and easy so let's say you wanted to look at uh, the link and what it was looking at you wanted to read it for yourself maybe you wanted to see when this article was posted uh, you could do that and you could read it all by yourself but one thing again as I mentioned I'm not sure if you want to be letting um, the AI I do your research for you because when we look at this we see that this is seven years ago right and maybe this is a topic that doesn't necessarily change much uh, throughout history because it's going to be pretty pretty difficult for us to ever get to a point where a camera is equivalent to the human eye but it doesn't change the fact that there may be a subject you're looking for that changes monthly or yearly especially something in regard to ai you don't want it pulling up something from three years ago that's no longer applicable for example there are videos that i get recommended to me in my youtube feed regarding 
AI art like Stable Diffusion, those videos were posted two weeks ago and they're already outdated. So you really don't want to be caught in that position and I think this is a really interesting example of that happening here. But again, this doesn't necessarily mean that every single link is going to be like that. It's just important that you check and verify the information that the AI is giving you. And that's something that you should be doing regardless. No matter what AI you're using, no matter which large language model, it does not matter. No matter what the AI says, you should be validating that information and making sure that you're not taking that at face value. But the answer we got here is pretty cohesive. Uh, for ChatGPT4, it feels a little small, which is okay, as long as the information and content within it is compact and answers the question, which it seems to definitely have done. But here's the thing, right? You have to understand that this result that we're reading here is not a perplexity-driven result. This is not a result that was created by their own model. This is ChatGPT4's response to the question based on the additional information that perplexity provides it. So what I'm going to assume is happening here, and please don't take what I'm about to say at face value, what I'm assuming is happening here is that it does a quick search, picks the most relevant articles, reads those articles, summarizes that information, and then provides all the critical information into one comprehensive paragraph for you to read in a ChatGPT4 style response. And if that is the case, it's really no different than what we have going on here with the browse feature, which is currently disabled inside of ChatGPT, as I mentioned earlier. So in terms of value between perplexity and ChatGPT, that's something that you have to determine for yourself. If you are primarily using ChatGPT for research and data analysis, then maybe perplexity is a good competitor for you to look into. But if you have a wide variety of use cases for your ChatGPT, then maybe perplexity isn't the best option because you can get very similar results inside of ChatGPT. And if the articles that it's providing you are not relevant anyways, um, there's really no reason why perplexity would be a better option than ChatGPT since in both situations you'd have to do your own research. Now, just out of curiosity, I want to take this exact prompt, we're going to bring it over to ChatGPT, let's make sure I have my custom instructions turned off, we'll go ahead and save that, make sure we've got nothing in our custom instructions, go to make sure we're on code interpreter. And we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and, and throw this exact prompt in there and see what we get. We've got our prompt in ChatGPT4, the exact same prompt that we've got in Perplexity. Now, I want to compare the difference between these two answers. Because they're both based on ChatGPT4, technically there should be some similarity. They should be pretty similar, except for the additional information that Perplexity provides from the links. For example, we see the one, the citations showing, you know, which link it came from. So outside of that information, how similar and how correct are these prompts? So here, what I want to point out is the fact that it says, due to the fast and constant movement of the eyeball, the actual resolution is estimated to be around 576 megapixels. And it cites two different sources for that, right? This one and this one. Now, when we go back to ChatGPT, no browsing feature, none of that, no information, nothing like that. Um, it also says the exact same thing. Some people estimate the eye's effective resolution to be equivalent to about 576 megapixels, but this is a rough estimate and not a directly comparable figure. So even though it doesn't have that additional information to confirm that, it still tells you that, hey, I'm not entirely sure, so you know, don't take my word for it. While here, since you're backed with sources, it can pretty comfortably say, hey, this is what we know about it, basically. So that's the big difference here, but in terms of the information that you actually get, it's pretty similar. The only thing is that it has a knowledge cutoff of 2021. Here's what's also important to note. Technically speaking, any articles written before 2021 should be included in this data set. It should know about it, it should have that information, but the thing is ChatGPT can't directly recall quotes even though it has these articles inside of its data set. So that's what Perplexity basically tries to work around, is it tries to basically bring specific articles that ChatGPT4 is trained on to the surface so that it can grab sources and actual citation from those articles to use instead of just splurging information claiming that it knows something like it does in ChatGPT4. But again, if the real concern is the content Content, our replies are very similar what they say is pretty much the same that they are not very comparable that the human eye has a greater resolution and a greater depth than any camera could achieve so even though one has sources and one does not they say the exact same thing 
So here is the Excel file or CSV file rather that we are going to be given to Perplexity. This is just a data set of a bunch of streamers on YouTube, uh, 201 rows, bunch of different you know columns and categories. And we've also got some information here. And so when I gave this to Claude and Code Interpreter, neither of them could read this information because it wasn't organized in a specific way. I'm curious to see what Perplexity is going to do with this, if it's just going to ignore it uh, like Code Interpreter and Claude did, or if it will actually take it into consideration. And this file is 24 kilobytes, so not terribly big. Definitely makes sense that it'd be able to read it. Before I mention what we're asking here, it's kind of important that you understand why we're using this data set. This data set was um, kind of a lead list that I had for a personal project that I was doing. So it's it's useless. It doesn't matter. That's why I don't mind showing it. Um, but that's pretty much what it is. So technically, this would be used for sales. So what I'm asking Perplexity to do is to tell me about the data set, explain what's in it, what it's about, and to look at the data set from a sales perspective, if I could spell perspective correctly. We've got our copilot enabled. So let's see what, uh, what we can do. OK, so first impressions, this feels very slow. Um, I'm not sure if it's because it's trying to read all of this. Wow, that's a lot of sources. 17, holy crap. Actually, okay, this information that we got is pretty comparable to what you'd get from Code Interpreter. Uh, my first impression, I thought these were resources, like citations from here, um, but I guess not. This is actually percentages from this chart, it looks like. So I'm not sure if it grabbed it directly from here or if it just did some basic calculations, uh, but that's super interesting. This is something that Code Interpreter did not read. Again, making the assumption that it read it from this chart and not calculated it from here. Then we also have our top streamers, which this is something that we could have figured out ourselves. Uh, and then it also gives you a quick summary and says, by analyzing the data set, businesses can identify potential partnerships and opportunities with fast growing Twitch streamers, which was the target goal of creating the CSV file. Then just out of curiosity, we'll do the same thing with um, code interpreter. This is also moving pretty slow. I'm not sure if there's something happening with ChatGPT4 today, but this is much slower than it usually is. Not sure what's happening here. So while this is still working, we can actually already draw some comparisons here. So when we look at um, you know perplexity, it lists all of these sources, right? It says considering 23 sources, where? I don't see any citations, any links, any reference of any kind. All of this information here was gathered from the data set and it's something that we could 100% grab from here if we really wanted it to calculate that, we would just have to ask for it. So in terms of difference, there really is none. I would even say that ChatGPT is doing a much better job as it's going above and beyond uh, to look at the information further from a data analysis and sales position. So that's something that Perplexity is not doing, like you have to ask it to do that. And I almost wonder if ChatGPT 4 shortened responses inside of Perplexity are a profit-driven decision. Because if they're both powered by ChatGPT 4, there's no reason why this answer should be any shorter or any longer than what we get here for the most part. I just wonder if these prompts are shorter, if these results are shorter in order to get more money out of people like us, right? Yeah, and here we can see that ChatGPT is running to issues, um, trying to figure out what's happening in that kind of sidebar that we were talking about, which is fine. It makes sense. It's It wasn't organized correctly, and when we talked about Code Interpreter and how to use it, one thing I mentioned is that you have to have a data set that's formatted properly so that ChatGPT can properly read it, and so that's what's happening here. Uh, but we did that on purpose just to see if Perplexity would be able to read it, and it, it completely ignored it. It didn't even reference it at all, didn't mention it, uh, completely ignored all that information. Here, even though it's not sure what to do with it, at least it mentions the fact that, hey, I recognize that there's a total entries tab, I recognize that there's a national distributions tab. This is all very impressive stuff, in my opinion. Again, comparing the two models, I would have to say that ChatGPT right out of the gate does a much better job. We get a much more comprehensive visual. Yeah, so here we don't have percentages, but we have a quantity of streamers depending on the language that they speak. Uh, here we've got percentages. So it, it they're essentially the same. It's a matter of what you think you need. If you really need the research element, then go for it. So which is better? Uh, it's a pretty difficult question to answer and one that I would say largely depends on your use case. In my opinion, as somebody who has been around this industry since its beginning, uh, since before ChatGPT, since before 2021 at all, 
I would say that this is a cash grab if I've ever seen it. And again, as I mentioned, that's not to say that this doesn't have its own value. I'm sure that this does a great job at research and it definitely gives you a head start for some basic tasks. But in terms of overall value and diversity of tasks and how it perceives that information, how it acts on information you give it, I think Code Interpreter does a much better job. Again, we didn't test the AI profile. We did some very basic analysis. So it's tough to determine, but I would say that, you know, just looking at what we did today, there's really no value here from a business perspective greater than what you could get out of Code Interpreter. Part of the reason why I'm saying that is, and part of the reason why I said that you guys need to be wary of things like this is because when you see powered by ChatGPT4, you have to understand that anything that tool can do, you can do it inside of ChatGPT. So, Essentially, what you'd be doing, assuming that you wanted to get the pro version of this, is you'd basically be paying for ChatGPT twice, except one of the times that you'd be paying, you'd be just paying for the research feature, which to me, it just doesn't seem like a very solid investment for your AI endeavors. But once again, it depends on your use case. If you are primarily researching or your job is literally to research, this, this tool is going to be your safe haven. It's going to be incredibly useful to you but if you're just a general ai user or you have questions that you ask to ai you do some general work with it you cover a wide range of topics there is basically no situation where perplexity is going to trump code interpreter so the main reason why you should be concerned is that you shouldn't be blinded by the fact that this is a new ai tool just because it has the new label doesn't mean that anything it provides is actually new this is a very explosive industry right now and there is a huge potential to make a lot of money. This is one company that is trying to capitalize on that without providing much value of their own. I mean, even you look at the UI, like, yeah, it looks good, I guess, but there's no specialty to it. It doesn't feel like it was really well thought out. None of this feels like it was something that was meant to be a long-term competitor to Code Interpreter or ChatGPT in general, like other companies are doing, like Anthropic, for example, who created Claude. That is an actual competitor to ChatGPT because it computes and thinks differently than ChatGPT does, while here, Perplexity basically copy and pastes what Code Interpreter says with some additional information. And as we found out, depending on your use case, it may say that it's using all these sources and considering them, but it doesn't even use that at all. Ultimately, you should be making this decision for yourself, but as someone who has spent a lot of time here, I would say that this is definitely a scam. And not a scam in the fact that it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, it absolutely does, it performs as intended. But in terms of being this brand new, explosive, really powerful tool, it's just not. But again, I could be wrong. I haven't done much research with Perplexity. This is just my initial impressions based on the video that I did with you guys today. So if there's something that you guys find or you find some additional information or you try something new that works in Perplexity but doesn't inside of Code Interpreter, please let me know. Maybe I'll rethink my position. But until then, I do think that $20 a month for essentially a glorified browsing feature that barely works is not a great investment. But yeah, guys, that's all I have. I hope that this provided you some additional information and some more insight into what's happening in AI for business. If you guys like the video, please be sure to subscribe and give the video a like. It means an immense amount to me. I really can't explain how much you guys' support has helped me and how much it's supported my mentality over the last month. It's been a big dream of mine to be successful on YouTube since I was a little kid and seeing the progress that I've made because of your support in the last months has been truly incredible. I really can't say thank you enough. So if you guys are appreciating this journey and really like the information that I'm providing, please stick around. I, I really intend to explore this more in depth. I've got some great projects that I'm working on, some really revolutionary stuff that I intend to share pretty soon. So definitely stick around and I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on uh, what's happening in the industry. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you later.